Your five senses are intricate, mysterious, and enigmatic. Each sense has a complex alignment which involves many processes to work without flaw, and they all happen in an instant. Our brains are phenomenal processing manipulators of our surroundings that can turn a subtle vibration in the air into a clear tone or a broken down chemical on a taste bud into a savory flavor. Many of our senses work together to create the vivid experiences of life. We will now explore further into how each of these senses work. The olfactory sense, or the sense of smell, is triggered by particles in the air that enter the nose. They dissolve into the mucus of the olfactory epithelium, which is a layer of tissue with nerve cells that transmit signals. Next, these signals are sent to the olfactory bulb at the back of the nose. The olfactory bulb connects to the parts of the brain which perceive scent. The limbic system of the brain and neocortex are responsible for controlling the sense of smell. The limbic system is where emotions are also processed, which is why many aromas are often associated with memories. The sense of smell is very specialized. It is believed that each receptor cell identifies only one type of receptor. We have around 40 million of these receptors, which is why humans can detect and differentiate so many o different odors. Anosmia, or the loss of the sense of smell, can be caused by a number of factors. The most common are temporary illnesses that cause problems with the lining of your nose, but can be caused by obstructions in the nasal passages, which vary in severity. Aneurysms, tumors, and diseases, such as Alzheimer's and Huntington's, can also damage the essential parts of the brain needed for detecting smell. Damage like this to the brain or nerves can cause permanent anosmia. The olfactory senses also influence our perception of taste, because both are so close together physically and have almost the same influence on our ideas of flavor, they coincide very equally. The sense of taste is known as the gustatory sense. When the tongue is exposed to a substance, the taste buds pick up the chemicals and perceive them as taste. Gustatory receptor cells primarily make up taste buds along with supporting cells. The taste buds from papillae, which are the small bumps on our tongues that help us taste our food and provide friction when we chew. Each receptor on the taste bud has a gustatory hair which reaches the chemicals through a taste pore. The taste pore is where the chemicals trigger the sensation of taste. The sensation is sent to the cerebral cortex of the brain, which reads the chemical simulation as taste. We have approximately 10,000 taste buds on our tongues, and they are grouped in areas of the tongue. The very back of the tongue is where we taste bitter substances. The sides are where we sense salty and sour, and the tip is where we taste sweet. It takes a moment for the saliva to carry the chemicals to all parts of the tongue, so we do not taste every flavor automatically. Humans can lose our ability to taste. The most common causes are the loss of smell, which interferes with our discernment of flavor. There are different types of taste loss. Hypogeusia is the weakening of the sensitivity of taste. This is very common and happens often as people age. Agusia is the more serious, complete loss of taste. Dysgusia, or phantom taste, is the perception of an unpleasant taste that lingers when it should no longer be present or should no longer be indicated. Your somatic senses give you the ability to touch and feel your surroundings. Nerves in your body sense pain, pressure, and temperature change. The receptors in your skin or in your body send signals to the neurons that connect to the spinal cord. The electrical signals are then transferred to the brain which interpret them. The parietal lobe of the brain receives most of these signals. But the somatic senses are also closely tied to our emotions. As one researcher believes, the brain region encoding basic touch properties such as how rough or smooth an object is also is sensitive to the social meaning of a touch. Emotion is involved at the primary stages of social touch. The loss of our somatic senses is rare, but sometimes disorders occur. Congenital insensitivity to pain is a disorder which causes some to lose their sensitivity to pain. 
Though this may seem like a blessing, it is not. People with this disorder cannot tell when they should seek medical attention and suffer because of it. If they break a bone or have a potentially dangerous injury, they have no alert system which tells them something is wrong. Though the disease is not fatal, its consequences can be. One of our most vital senses is the visual sense. Our eyes are very complex structures which process light reflected off of objects around us. This reflected light enters through the cornea, which bends the light. Since the cornea is curved slightly, it presents the image upside down. The bent rays of light pass through the pupil, which is controlled by the iris. The iris regulates how much light is let in through the pupil. The light then goes through the lens, which focuses the light onto the retina. The retina is what sends the light to the optic nerve, which in turn sends the image to the brain. There are two places where vision is processed in the brain, the occipital lobe and the visual cortex. The occipital lobe is the place where light is processed into an image. The visual cortex, however, lets you identify and respond to the images. It allows you, for example, to recognize a ball being thrown toward you and understand its action and respond correctly by catching it. Along with blindness, there are many disorders of the eye, such as cataracts, glaucoma, and color blindness. Cataracts form as the lens gradually mists over and becomes less clear, which can hinder sight. Glaucoma occurs when there is excess fluid in the eye. This fluid creates pressure and damages the optic nerve. Color blindness is an impairment in which certain colors are not identifiable. This is caused by a faulty gene. The auditory sense is very complex. An intricate system in the ear converts vibration from the air to what we know as sound in the brain. These vibrations first reach the outer ear. The outer ear is where the ear canal and eardrum are located. Sound travels through the ear canal, which causes the eardrum to vibrate. Next, we encounter the middle ear. The middle ear is behind the eardrum and houses three tiny bones called ossicles. These bones connect to the eardrum at one end and to the inner ear at the other end. The vibrations carried from the eardrum in turn make the ossicles vibrate. Then movement is created in the fluid of the inner ear. The fluid, or cochlea, which is now moving, causes receptors called hair cells to pick up the signal. The movement of the hair cells receives electric signals from the inner ear and transports them up the auditory nerve to the brain. The most severe ear disorders cause hearing deficit or deafness. They can occur through serious damage to the structures of the ear or simply by faulty genetics. These problems can arise from a number of causes, but there are other problems related to hearing. Auditory processing disorder is a hearing problem which affects a small portion of young children. They often have problems distinguishing sounds coming from different places. They have trouble understanding speech in places with extraneous sounds. Many of them have trouble learning and can have serious long-term problems if the disorder is not recognized. Synesthesia is another disorder which involves all the senses. People with synesthesia have a sort of blending of the senses, as in they experience some senses concurrently. It happens when the brain does not separate the different sections when consciously experiencing them. A synesthete may hear a flavor or see a sound. It is uncommon but not widely rare. About 4% of the population has synesthesia. Our bodies and brains can amaze us in their keen sensitivity to the world around us. Our senses protect us from danger, enhance our daily activities, and shape our experiences. Without our senses, we would have very little emotional responses. Each sense makes up how we live life.